last year I was saying I was going to diagnose the uh, um, mental illness. Um, I've had a few comments saying, oh, what do you know? What have you studied? You're not a professional. It's kind of a dangerous thing to go around diagnosing mental illness. Well, I've uh, unlisted all of the book reading of holodynamics, which will give you the perfect education to be able to pick out a mental illness and be able to diagnose this. These are more books that uh, this scientist has been focused on training doctors to be better doctors. This is a guy that's been trying to connect with the United Nations to try and get them to do what the right thing is to do. Um, he is a psychologist, is letting you know an awful lot of what the professional systems are, how they think, <coughs> how they operate how they diagnose people um, for profit. Basically, there's an awful lot of psychopaths that you need to know who's mentally ill, how they impact society, and create more and more mental illness. So, like, it's starting to be an infectious disease. And the disease is our leaders. It's the CEOs. It's the media. And if you can't diagnose who's mentally ill and the influence they have on society, it's no different than this shooter that they're analyzing shot how many people. You know, if you think the guy on the street with the gun is mentally ill, you should check out the mental illness of your media, your politicians, the CEOs that are running OBP oil and killing millions of people in the whole Gulf. There's an awful lot of mental illness, and yes, our... Um, Men, our, our health medical systems are definitely failing at being able to diagnose people that really truly need the help. Hillary Clinton is prime example dealing with uh, classic mental illness. According to the CNN report, Bill Clinton is suffering from severe mental illness. You know, most of our leaders, according to the standards of these doctors that are on CNN, if they look at their own behavior, they're diagnosing themselves as, as being totally mentally ill. And their suggestion of how to get help, <laughs> maybe we should be listening to it and get some of our leaders some help. So I'm going to go through this um, uh, CNN piece, give it my little analyzation. Um, I've also taken off the reading of these holodynamic books. This is really relevant information. Um, if you want to know anything about uh, mental health, these are books that will definitely give you one hell of a good education. It really gets into all systems, um, why they can't function, and what it takes to create a system that actually does work. Um, deep, deep science kind of a challenging read, but those that are interested in uh, knowing some of the deepest sciences, that information that you don't know about, um, send me a, an email and request the list and I'll send you a link and you can enjoy reading and kind of understand the logic I'm using while I analyze <laughs> this video. It, holodynamics is something everybody needs to learn right now. I'll go through the video and you see what you think. I'd love to hear your opinion. Peace out. Speak of harsh reality and an overriding mystery. What happened to Jared Lee Loughner? Back then he was completely different, very caring, very sweet, a gentle, kind, altogether a pretty great guy. He was just a great kid and it, it seems like he just snapped somewhere in high school and uh, went down from there. He, he was definitely off. He, he had he had a grin about him. He would laugh at things that were sad. Uh, he, he just didn't seem to, to be aware of what was going on. I was scared of what he could do. I wasn't scared of him physically, but I was scared of him bringing a weapon to class. Did anyone, could anyone have foreseen the downward spiral of Jared Lee Loughner from the nice kid some people remember to the mass murderer he is now accused of being? Could treatment have stopped the Tucson killing? 
Today, two psychiatrists who specialize in severe mental illness, Dr. E. Fuller Corey and Dr. Lisa Dixon. This is a psychiatric failure. It's not a political failure. I don't think that changing the tenor of political dialogue would have really made any difference. Then? Now, if you've been reading any of these, that are listening into the reading of this hollow dynamics, it really does explain that everything does have a cause. Um, our medical systems right now want to give you a pill so that you'll keep doing the same wrong thing all the time, but the pill will make you ignore the problem, ignore the causes. It's like you're getting hit over the head with a hammer but take a painkiller so that while you're getting hit over the head with a hammer and getting the headache, you, you know, it relieves the pain <laughs> so you can keep getting the hit over the head. This is how our systems are running right now. Everything is friggin' wrong. It's creating a lot of diseases right now. We're going to focus on mental illness. But this guy that created Hollow Dynamics went into mental institutions to prove that his concept works, that if you cure the causes, you cure the illness, in this particular case, mental illness. He went into a mental institution. Once he reached over an 80% cure rate, they fired him because the hospitals were losing money. Um, doctors, psychiatrists have zero interest in curing people because they want to treat you. They want to give you medication. Why? Because the pharmaceutical world profits hugely from your mental illness. Now you'll notice that they said something happened to this really amazing kid once he got into school. I've been saying in a lot of my videos, our school systems are completely screwed up. They are there de designed to make you fit into a box, to not think. This guy is talking on some videos um, about taking sociology. I was actually thinking of going back to school, taking sociology, simply because everything that they're saying is wrong, and I would like to go into university and challenge some of those university professors of what they think about sociology, because clearly they're lacking an awful lot of information. But if you were a child going into this, this school system who is actually training you how to become a sociopath, if you want to learn where psychopaths learn how to be psychopaths, it's in your school system. They teach you how to have all of the behaviors so that you are going to be the winner of whatever game you're manipulating to earn money. That's where most CEOs are psychopaths because they learn it within the school system. And our kids today are starting to recognize these patterns. We're starting to see that our government systems, all systems are corrupt. And when we have free thinking minds, our school system wants to criticize you and very much control your language. So yes, when a child breaks, something happens to him in school, maybe something did happen to him in school. And yeah, it's kind of scary when um, you become aware of this and all systems are going to now be designed to call you crazy because you're pointing out how, how wrong things are everyone that's involved in the crime, in, in the participation of all the insanity that's going on globally, they put a lot of pressure on that one person to keep calling him crazy. So I find that odd. And they, you know, focus on the terms that a bunch of uh, psychiatrists are, you know, going to say it's not a political issue. Yes, the words we hear in our environment definitely have an effect on us. Every aspect of every product you market, they go to school to learn how to influence you into buying their products. So this is the science that's taught in school systems on how to use the media to control the language that you listen to. Because the language you listen to influences your life. Do you not think for a minute that media and politicians aren't influencing your social behaviors? And then we're going to have psychologists that are going to come on CNN and tell you, 
it wouldn't have mattered what kind of language we have. It wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, it would matter. You're manifesting. Our leaders, the sociopaths, the, the crazy psychopaths that are running the country, running your, your businesses, these CEOs, you know, are, are creating and manifesting insanity within our, our, our environments, our, our communities. And the only way to not let it affect you is to know what is sane and what isn't sane. I, again, listen, subscribe to, or ask me for the playlist for Hollow Dynamics or get the books on Hollow Dynamics. It will show you who is sane and who isn't insane. And by the, you know, there's a lot of insanity that's going to go and try and call this shooter insane. But there was a cause that made this guy act the way he acts. And the way CNN is reporting the news is what will perpetuate this even bigger. They are the insane people. These psychologists are the insane people. Your leaders are the insane people. Call in a spade a spade. But they manifested what they wanted to see and they are trying to do that even more. The best thing to do is know the sciences, know who's insane and who isn't, and keep calm. Because as soon as you lose control, you turn into them. That's the biggest secret. Don't fall into their labels, and don't, don't turn into who they, they expect you to be. Peace out. Author Pete Early, a father who battled to help his son through the mental health maze, and psychologist Fred Fries, who himself has been institutionalized for schizophrenia and the two members of Congress who founded the Mental Health Caucus, California Congressman Grace Napolitano and Pennsylvania Congressman Tim Murphy. I'm Candy Crowley, and this is State of the Union. The community college Jared Lee Lochner once attended has released a video he apparently shot on the Pima County campus. All the teachers that you have are being paid illegally, and have a legal authority over the Constitution of the United States under the First Amendment. This is genocide in America. Thank you. This is Jared from Pima College. The vast majority of people diagnosed with a serious mental illness are not dangerous, but how do you tell? And where is the legal boundary between forcing a troubled, potentially dangerous person into treatment and the rights of an individual? Joining me now to discuss this and more, Dr. Lisa Dixon, professor of psychiatry at the University of Maryland School of Medicine, and Dr. E. fuller Torrey, research psychiatrist and founder of the Treatment Advocacy Center. Doctors, thank you for joining us. Let's just, I want to take a look um, at, at Lofner because you've watched it as we all have watched it, and we should say you haven't examined him. And, and, and we understand that. How do you tell? Because the first thing, whenever I talk to anyone in the mental health industry, they say, well, just remember that the vast majority of, of schizophrenics and of, of uh, anyone with a serious mil mental illness, they're not dangerous. How do you tell? The strongest predictors of violence are, number one, past history of violence, Candy. That's true of non-people who don't have schizophrenia, too. Number two, substance abuse. These are the two single biggest predictors. Being a male is also a predictor. Beyond that, once the person has schizophrenia, there are a few symptoms that increase the violence a little bit. One is if you are paranoid and you think people are trying to hurt you. Another is if you think people or the government are trying to control your mind. A third one is if you have voices that are commanding you, to telling you to do things. These are the kind of things that will increase the risk a little bit. Okay, let's just go down the list, if I can remember. Let's analyze Bill Clinton's past history. This guy's got a history of killing people. Um, drug substance abuse. This guy has a history of an airport and taking in drugs. He, Bill Clinton has been known to be involved in drugs, selling it, distributing it, his family history is drug abuse. So he's got those two patterns. Um, and he's male. <laughs> and and uh, voices that the government is trying to control your mind. 
So what did Bill Clinton do? Be the government. <laughs> it, he's paranoid, so paranoid that he, he feels he needs to be the government so that the government won't control his mind. And then he, you know, Bill Clinton has these voices that he's going to be bigger than John F. Kennedy. 